What's up, everybody? This is Lisa Lozano with Global Fight Talk, and today we have with us Rashad Coulter. Rashad, you're going to be fighting on the Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones card this Saturday. And um, we just found out today that you have a new opponent, which we're going to talk about that in a second. But let's talk about, you know, this fight, how it came about, and how exciting is it to be fighting with someone that I believe that everyone looks up to, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones? Uh, I'm excited to be on the card, man. Um, two legends, two of my childhood uh, favorite boxers. Um, I'm super excited. Uh, I don't really think it's really going to set in until I'm actually there uh, during weigh-ins and, and fight night, but I'm super excited. Well, we all know that we just heard that um, your original opponent, um, Vidal Raleigh, has suffered an injury. And we have now, you have now a new opponent, Haseem Ram Rahman? Not, Rahman. Yes, who is 9-0. and oh, He's undefeated. And um, he's a son of a, of, of, a, of a champion, you know, a world-famous boxer. How does that feel to um, get a last-minute opponent and someone with that much of experience? you know, experience on you? It's a fight game. Um, I'm excited. You know, um, I grew up watching his dad, so it's going to be pretty interesting to fight his son. And um, I don't know, man. I just, I don't too much look at the experience because uh, I got a great trainer in Nathan Pipitone, and, you know, he's prepared me for, for every type of fighter possible throughout the years. Uh, we put in a lot of work for this camp. Uh, we've trained really hard for this camp. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's it's just like MMA. You know, uh, I didn't think that boxing, you know, it happened as much in boxing, but they pull out the week of the fight, like a few days before the fight. But it doesn't make, it doesn't make a difference. You know, different opponent, same plan. Now you're fighting the week of Thanksgiving, and I you also got a birthday coming up. How hard is it to to diet or you know to stay in fight shape during Thanksgiving week? You know it's hard. Um, it's not going to be as bad because this year everybody's not really doing nothing for Thanksgiving, but I'm used to it. I think like my last three years in a row, I've I've had fights around this time, so. Um, you know, I got a great nutritionist in Eric Pena, uh, who's on my team for this fight camp. So, uh, you know, a lot of people think that when you diet, that it sucks. But Eric has done a great job of keeping me very well fed and uh, keeping my weight down. So it, it's not that big of a deal. Now, how hard is it to transition from your original opponent, opponent now to someone like him? I mean, I know, you know, people say, you know, different opponents, same game plan. But Vidal and Racine, they have they, they have a different fighting style. So how do you transition from what you've been training for for however long until the, the week of? Uh, you know, I've really been uh, – I've, I've had a lot of good sparring partners for this mm -hmm. fight camp. Um but also, I've been sparring uh, just just so happened to be at this camp. I got a lot of sparring rounds in with my uh, MMA training partner, Jeff mm -hmm. Neal, who is, you know, in my opinion and a lot of people's opinion, one of the best strikers uh, in, in the welterweight division in the entire world. So uh, Jeff Neal is a very good southpaw, man. He's very tricky, very sneaky, very fast. And he throws combos, like he throws punches in bunches. So, it, I mean, it just so happened that I've been sparring him too. Um, because, you know, uh, uh, Rahman, you know, he likes to switch. You know, he's a southpaw fighter. He'll go to orthodox. And um, the difference between the two is Vidal is more like a, a, a counter puncher. Like he wants you to, to make a mistake so he can counter your mistake. Um, Rahman is, is, is sort of like that too, but you know, he mm -hmm. likes to go to the body a lot, and uh, sometimes you know, he, he does move very well. So, but by me sparring Jeff Neal this fight camp, I feel like there's there's nothing different, you know. So, I just got to recognize when he switches and make the adjustments during the fight, and I'll be perfectly fine. 
Well, you've been in training camp for some quite some time now. And like I said, you know, a last minute opponent, last minute adjustments. You have, you know, your coach, Nate, who, who, who you always speak so highly of. When yeah. he got that call of saying, we're going to change opponents, what was Nate's thoughts behind that? He didn't hesitate. He was like, okay. Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, man, I mean, that's up to y'all, but he's going to fight him. He's like, Rashad will take it. He's like, we'll take it. We'll take it. They gave us, uh, you know, two different people. Mm -hmm. Um, because we had been hearing, you know, throughout the, the boxing world that Vidal was hurt. Um, so they gave us like a few a few opponents, and um, you know, one fight just didn't make sense. You know, I was already cutting weight, I've already pretty much got down close is you know, closer to fight weight, which is 210. And um, the other opponent was like he was big, he was like 260, only at least 260, which made no sense to you know, take a fight with a guy that outweighs me by so much who actually, that person had nine fights too, you know, um, on a week's notice and give up so much weight. Not saying that I couldn't beat him, but why shoot yourself in the foot and, uh, you know, start behind the eight ball and, and fight a guy that has you outweighed by like 50 pounds. So um, when he when he came up with the, the Rahman name, uh, he had already known about him. So he would he jumped on the fight. He's like, yeah, man, we'll take it. You know, um, I know a guy, a lot of guys with my sparring partners, they've sparred him. Uh, some other people in my circle, they know him from, you know, from Team USA. Uh, so Nate, Nate didn't second guess, man. Nate knows what I'm capable of doing. He knows how hard he's pushed me. And mm -hmm. Nate would never put me in a, a, a situation where uh, he didn't think that I could be successful. Well, you, you know, you you had in mind um, for the last um, month or so that you were going to fight Vidal, and you've been out to L.A. to do the press conference, and everything that everybody's been commenting on is that, you know, one, you're an MMA fighter, and two, your age. And, and I believe these are people who really don't know anything about the, the fight game. And I'm just going to be honest. Um, there's yeah. a lot of fight fans out there that, that who are, you know, gun hold uh, fight fans of, of the opponent. And they just say anything. How hard is it to not to listen to those, you know, comments and, 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 and you know, read those comments? Does it ever get to you? And, and what, do you, what do you do? What do you think about when, when, they, when they say those things? Um. The funny part is I, I really don't even read them. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people, they say, hey, man, you hear this person say this? No, I didn't see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, like so people think that they're being funny by saying something or whatever, but it's just a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, to me, it, it really does not matter. It's like a waste of time because nine times out of ten, I don't read it. And if I heard about it, it's because somebody else brought it up and – uh, I'll tell them, like, man, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't want to hear that. You know, this is a fight. This is a fight. And, like, you know, they say things about my age. and um, But, you know, a lot of people don't know my story. Like, I didn't start fighting. Uh, I didn't have my first fight until I was 30 years old. Uh, I'll be 39 on weigh-ins on the 27th. So I didn't have my first fight until I was 30. Uh, I picked up training in uh, the end of 2008 going into uh, – uh, 2009 um and from that moment on man like i just fell in love with it i never i didn't have a background in boxing like a lot of these guys i didn't have a background in wrestling jiu-jitsu none of that like i just came fresh off the couch i'm an athlete and i felt as though um at the age of almost 30 that you know i can get paid for fighting and i had like a lot i was getting into a lot of trouble and it was a great avenue for me and uh, I just fell in love with fighting. I just picked it up real quick. And like in, within five years, I made it to the UFC at the age of 35. So I don't, I don't really buy into that. My body doesn't have all the wear and tears. All these guys have been fighting their whole life. You know, amateurs, they go through 100, 200, 300 fights. They spar hard like two, three times a week. All these years of their life. So they've taken so much head trauma and they've, and yeah, they've been in a lot of wars, you know what I'm saying? Like, they've got a lot of experience, but at the end of the day, man, some of these guys, all, all it takes is a solid 
punch in this game, and especially with somebody with, with our weight, it doesn't mm-hmm. take much to put a man to sleep. And um, I don't, I don't see why November twenty eighth should be any different. So, like you said, you, you, you don't really pay attention to what the people are saying now. People are are looking at this fight with Hasim who's a very experienced fighter, who's 9-0, and and a lot of people already got a lot to say about your fighting someone like him. How, um, what do you say to those people? I mean, he's 9-0, and we're going to be honest here. He's 9-0, and you're 4-0, you're and, and, you know, he comes from a family of fighters. His dad obviously is, you know, He's a world champion, famous boxer, and you're going to be fighting in one of the biggest cards for 2020 and Mike Tyson. And why not bring a, a son of a champion? Hey, man, I grew up watching his daddy fight, so um, I like watching his daddy fight, man. But it doesn't matter. You know, he, he's 9-0. and um, And like the famous saying, somebody's always got to go. But at the end of the day, it is a right. fist fight. Mm-hmm. It's a fist fight. And it's just like growing up in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Everybody had that one dude in the hood that everybody was scared of and, and nobody wanted to fight. And everybody said, but when that one person whooped his ass, that's all it took was that one person to put their foot down and whoop his ass. And then everybody saw that person wasn't so big and so bad anymore. Now, I'm not saying that Rahman is not – I mean, I'm not saying that that's him, but what I'm talking about from his record-wise, from how long he's been in a boxing game, like, he's been around. He's been around fighting since he was a kid. Yeah, he's been doing it. Like, he's comfortable in there. Like, he knows how to, you know, try to make you fight his kind of fight without doing too much but still trying to look like he's winning. So – I mean, for me, it, it doesn't it doesn't make a difference, man. He's not a no, uh, and you gotta think, man. I I fought in the UFC, you know what I'm saying? To make it to these levels, you're fighting some of the most dangerous men on the planet, and I did it in the UFC, and I did it in heavyweight for three fights that I shouldn't have been fighting in heavyweight. Where these men in the UFC are uh, true heavyweights across the world, like 200. 60 having to cut to make 265 and we're taking blows with four ounce gloves so my composure um my experience and just me fighting uh just bigger dudes with smaller gloves will i feel as though will be an advantage for me it's not not necessarily an advantage but it's gonna make me calm i'm gonna be right at home i'm not gonna be nervous i'm not gonna be timid i'm not gonna be any of that you know what I'm saying? Like, we're, we're wearing 10 ounce gloves. You know what I'm saying? I fought 270 pound men with four ounce gloves. So I'm okay. I'm comfortable. His experience doesn't scare me. I know it's going to be a good fight. And everybody that knows me knows, man, I don't, I don't run from no fight. I don't run from no fight. Like, we're going to stand 10 toes down and we're going to throw. So we're going to see. Let me ask you this <clears throat> How did this fight come? come about you know there there's a lot of fighters they could have chose and they and they chose you and and I know there's people out there like oh they could have chose you know this person who who's an act who's been fighting in boxing who's an actual boxer and with this type of experience how did they how did they find Rashad Coulter and how did this fight with Vidal come about um they originally offered it to uh one of my friends, but, you know, he didn't take the fight and, you know, he threw my name out there, you know, and I'm just blessed that I got people um, who speak my names, uh, who speaks my name in rooms with big time people when I'm not around. And uh, Muhammad King Mo, Muhammad Awal, he did that for me. Um, you know, he saw an opportunity. He felt that, you know, it would be lucrative for me and, and will bless me. And he, he threw my name out there and, you know, it's no secret. They jumped on it because they felt as though I was just an MMA fighter. They thought I was one and know. Um, and they thought because of my age was going to be a factor. Uh, so, of course, man, you know, it's the boxing game. You know, you see a lot of these boxers like 20, 20 something to know or 30 something to know, but 
they haven't really, really truthfully been tested, you know. So, um, so the fight came about because he threw my name in the hat, you know, and they and they chose me because they thought it was going to be an easy fight. But man, they're in for a rude awakening. Does that make you mad that people think that that you know you're because you're an MMA fighter, this is going to be a walk in the park? Yeah, uh, no, nah, man, it don't make me mad. You know, I'm past getting mad now. I really don't care what people think. You know, uh, I had a partner that told me, man, a pair of lips will say anything. You know, so people just talk, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes people are mad because it's not them. Uh, and sometimes people just got a lot of hate in their heart. And, uh, you know, they have nothing nice to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they don't look at it uh, from another perspective. They look at it from a they wish it was them perspective. Or oh, it should have been me perspective, um, or just pure hate in their heart. So it doesn't make me mad at all. You know what I'm saying? Like people, other somebody else will get mad. I don't lose any sleep about it because, like I said, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored, and I keep getting these opportunities because you know God feels as though I can handle them. So how has training camp been so far? It's been great. Um, you know, I did training camp my way. You know what I'm saying? I did training camp how I wanted to do. Now, the quarantine did me good. Um, I didn't uh, get beat up a whole lot. I didn't, meaning like my body. Uh, I didn't get really get beat up a whole lot this training camp. And uh, we just focused a lot of uh, just fundamentals and technique and, and just speed and, and straightening up punches and and those things. So training camp has been it's been really good, man. It, it helped me find my love for fighting again, to be honest. Well, that's awesome. Well, I didn't want to take too much of your time. I know this is fight week for you and, you, and you have to be excited. There's a lot of people from the DFW area, your family, everyone is wishing you the best of luck. Happy early birthday, Rashad. Friday, it is your birthday on weigh in. So that would be a beautiful present to yourself yeah. To win the, to to win this fight. Um, any shout outs? Uh yeah, man. I would like to shout out uh, my boxing coach, man, Nathan Pippitone, man. Like he's he's poured a lot of his heart into me, man. His blood, sweat, and tears. And you know, he's never gave up on me over the years, no matter if I lost in MMA or he's always been the same, man. And you know, I always gotta shout that dude out. Nate Pippitone is just a great human being. Um, you know, I wanna shout out. Uh, my uh, supplement sponsor, Vital Proteins, for this and uh, for this camp, they've been solid for me, sending me all the things that I need for my recovery, and they help me get through my training. Um, I want to say thank you to the Hemp Pimp, uh, one of my sponsors, uh, as well as I want to thank Eric Pena, man, um, for uh, Pena Performance, my nutritionist, man. He he's been solid, man. This whole camp, and he's been very easy to work with. He's helped me keep my weight down and. Uh, I'm just looking forward to going out there and performing this Saturday, man, and just showing the world, man, like, I feel good, man, and I feel good, and I'm just glad to be fighting. Well, I'm excited for you, Rashad, to be stepping in the ring this Saturday. Um, this is going to be pay-per-view, pay and I yeah. think I think it's like $49.99 or something like, something like that. Yeah, something like that. And um, it's, it's this Saturday, and it's you guys are going to be fighting at the Staples Center which right. is another legendary place that you're going to be fighting at along with Mike Tyson and Roy. And right. um, before I, I wrap this up, you guys that push play, thank you very much. Make sure that you follow all of our social media sites, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Until then, we are out.